Kin Tama Time, chapter 598. I'm not even going to talk a lot here because I've been waiting to get around to this because ever since Thursday I have really been keeping away from everything related to this chapter except for like there I saw the uh, Sakamoto, Nobunobu, and Katsura. But aside from that, Nothing, and I have just been waiting and waiting and waiting first for the translations to come out, then for a chance to actually read the chapter because I've been busy the past two or three days. But without further ado, let's go. Chapter 598 of Gintama, the third chapter of the final arc. Good grief. Appearing at the crisis in Edo is. You really kept us waiting, didn't you? I'd like to say welcome back, but. Because of how much you dragged your feet getting here, you don't even have a house to come back to anymore. Don't sweat it. Look at the panel of all their feet. Yes. <sighs> we'll take everything back. Kagura. Gintoki. Shinpachi. So, don't mind if we're just gonna say... We're home. Tadaima. Let's go. Ah, this full clip, this full page. If those three are together, they're ready anytime. I'm sitting in the uh, trashed, dismantled odd jobs. That is a glorious page indeed, I must admit. Even though it's sad to see the odd jobs all falling apart, we of course know that they are really odd jobs, and that's all that matters, and they all just look so lovely. Chapter 500, Lesson 598. Everyone has a terminal between their legs. You had to go there, Sarati, didn't ya? This is Gintama, after all. <laughs> oh, whatever. Um, I don't know whether you're allies of justice or villains, but you guys really, but you guys got really flashy while we weren't around. Haven't you heard in this country when you're a stranger entering someone's house, whether you're a good guy or a bad guy, you take off your sandals? Before you talk starting about good or evil, it's politeness you should stick to a person. Stick to as a person. Now get your dirty feet off of the sign. They're standing on the sign. How dare they? <laughs> you know, the panel of Gintoki. Don't enter my country with those stinking feet. <laughs> you guys ain't got no country anymore. Sadaharu! <laughs> <laughs> what? Yes! The fourth member of the Eurozia. Let's go! Behind us. All three of them! Taking out all the Amanto. What's wrong, Great Liberation Army? You guys broke the terminal, but you haven't got... But you haven't broke a single one of the terminals between our legs. If you can't do that, like hell, you can take over Earth. Like how you're gonna break them in this country. There's a great terminal between the legs of the Camry girls and Robo girls, too. <sighs> like how there is. <laughs> Due to a system failure, we will be suspending terminal operations today. <laughs> it's your own fault. Do not linger. Abandon the damaged <laughs> facility and clear the premises immediately. He's been bent into a thick noodle terminal. <laughs> why, Gintama, why? Um, don't let them get away. Shoot them dead. Poor Gintoki. Gintoki's Gintama are the uh, ultimate uh, victims of this entire series, I must say. Gengai! <laughs> So, you bastards have finally shown yourselves. I've made sure to do good maintenance on all my machines. I'll stick with you for a space for a space war or a one year war, whatever it takes, Ginoji. What already worn out? Oops, uh. <laughs> oh, Ginoji's balls got caught in the tanks. Oh my gosh, Gintoki! <laughs> of course, as soon as Gintoki shows up to do something cool and important, the uh, entire world decides to uh, pick on him as much as possible. Um, what? Already worn out? I couldn't wait for this moment to come. The party's only just gotten started. Sheesh, that's men for you. 
Even at a time like this, you've got that excited look on your faces. It's like, is that Saburo? From way back when? Someone people have long been waiting for has finally returned. Shut up, Granny, that my son wasn't like that perm head. Nobody said anything about sons. What about you? Your house was just destroyed. But that face looks like... I'll just say this. My husband didn't have a look as dumb as that. You got that right. But if your son or my husband were still alive, if they were still living in this city, I'd expect that they'd have the same look on their faces as us. That's kind of interesting. That obviously we sort we've known what uh, Gintoki has meant to Orose for a very long time, but to sort of see that from Gengai's perspective isn't something that we really get that often, because he is a far more minor character than most of the recurring cast, I suppose you could say, but, huh, that's really, that's a really cool way to look at it. It's almost like a Gintoki, or that everybody, but Gintoki in particular, has begun to fill a void in Gengai over his lost son. It's really, it's a really cool way to look at it. You'd better have the same look on the face as us. Sayo! <laughs> oh my gosh, all uh, Jirocho's guys. Tetsuko. Cousin Nigata. Everybody, it's everybody! All the, all, the, all the side characters now. Oh, what's his name? What's his name? Uh, Hoska. Uh, oh, what's his name? Why am I forgetting it? I feel like I'm a bad Gintama fan. I will get this. I'm not getting it. Forgive me, I'm a terrible game time fan. I'm gonna look this up as soon as I finish this because how could I not forget his how could I forget a character's name? But um Everybody looking on, everybody looking on. Everybody's fighting. Du -du -du Gintoki, let's go. Shimbachi Kagura. Look at that pen. Look at that artwork. How how crazy the motion. I've noticed that uh, Sarachi has gotten very, very good at drawing very like dynamic motion in his panels. It's something that I really appreciate in his art, at least recently. And say, this is just... Nonsense going on. How Kabuki Cho has to be. Remind me of the Four Devas arc. Just like all of the... Uh, all the regular inhabitants of uh, Kabukicho fighting for their home instead of just like our major, major core cast. Because of course they are just as important to all of this other core cast is. Alright, what are they seeing? Do, do, do. Just more fighting. There's not really that much that can be said about that, although <laughs> like one of the women smashing the uh, bottle over the Amanto's heads. The bastards, what the hell do you think you're doing? Do you know who we are? We came to save you guys from Nintendo Shoes Rule. We're the Liberation Army. <laughs> Liberation. Why don't you mind your own business? We don't need your help. Saigo! Um, as you can very well see, we've been living free for quite some time now. <laughs> who are all these monsters? A rare good line from you, Saigo. That's exactly right. We are a free people of a free city. We shake off the rule of the Tendoshu, as well as the rule of the Liberation Army's fishy helping hands. Ah, uh, that's a statement right there. And we're also free to go to the hospital. Okay. You pushed yourself too far, I'm trying to look cool. Oh dear, yes, that would be why. His leg is off terribly broken. That's a problem. Oh well, of course injuries are going to happen in these sort of things. Uh, Saigo san katsu san! You've got, quite a you've got off to quite a flashy start there, Paco. I'm not still calling him Paco. But we've been waiting for you. Kabuki Cho really needs idiots like you. That was enough reckless. That was rec that was enough recklessness enough to put to to put a yakuza to shame. Boss gave us this town to look after, and you're really making us lose face. You really think you got any chance to win when you pick a fight with the whole universe? Nope. 
Nope. Even if we all join forces, even if all of Earth joins forces, there's still no way we can win. So we're going to stop this war. What we got to win is the fight of words. Hmm. What do we mean by that? A peaceful solution? Obviously, an entirely peaceful solution is unlikely here, but we'll see. Because obviously, the real, um, the real, not, not, the, not the heart of the plot con conflict, but the heart of the, the story at this point is, of course, Utsuro. And obviously, that's not something that can be beaten by sheer power alone, just as this whole war cannot be. So to have that issue be uh, connected to the war with the rest of the universe as a whole, it kind of makes sense. The samurai are revolting. There are uprisings happening one after another in various different locations. They're showing signs of driving us away. Are they insane? Does that planet of monkeys think they can win against an allied army of 30 countries? Perhaps they've flown into a rage from the army sta stationed on Earth's looting. May we have left the soldiers too much freedom with their rewards. This should be no problem. After crushing the association, this is just fundraising to also take over the Earth. War. Profiting off of the war, of course, of course, is one. As well, one power is driven out, another one comes in. Such is the flow of things in these stories. The just cause of ridding that planet of the meddlesome monkeys is... Excuse me? What is it? We're in the middle of a meeting. It's an envoy from Earth's government. Government? Is there still any government there? Did they perhaps come to apologize for the samurai's carelessness? Well... Geez, quite some... Oh, this is this is that panel. This is that panel that I saw. Um, geez, quite some hospitality for the guests that arrived on arms. Honestly, your generals are are people of such a meager caliber. Sheath your weapons, scoundrels. Are you not aware of who is in your presence? Yes. Yes. Ah, the barbarian subduing shogun, Tokugawa Nobunobu, is here. Yes. Okay, so that's where they are. They're not back on Earth. They're going to deal. They're trying to deal with the impending, uh, the impending invasion from all of these so-called liberation army. I must say that uh, Katsura and Sakamoto each look quite glorious in their uh, in their official getup. And of course, it's really it's really fitting considering the uh, roles that. Uh, these two, their actual historical counterparts, play in this entire revolution. I do know that Katsura, in particular, is very instrumental in the actual... I believe Sakamoto as well, that both of them are quite instrumental in the uh, government that follows this time period, in, in the establishment of that, and the Japan that follows the uh, Tokugawa era. But... Oh, that was a fun chapter. That was a fun one. I'm very happy with the way that this is headed. I'm curious to see how we're going to do this. Like, are we going to be able to drive away the Liberation Army and then be left to deal with the Tendoshu themselves? Or are we going to... I don't know how... Because basically we have two sets of dangers to the entire Earth right now, thanks to uh, thanks to what Utsuro is on. Of course, Utsuro and the Tendoshu... Then themselves are still a real danger here, but the more immediate threat is the Liberation Army, which is just essentially doing exactly what Utsuro wants them to do. Utsuro and the Tendo shows a problem probably aren't going to be going away. We're gonna we're gonna have to deal with that later. That's going to be the final thing we've dealt with. The question is, are we going to deal with the Liberation Army now, or are we going to be continuing to deal with a double conflict for a more significant portion of the arc? Are we gonna get it out of the way, or are we gonna keep going with it? Because obviously that's going to have a rather tremendous impact on the way that the rest of this takes shape. I do have a question as to how much um, how much of a role that Saigo is actually going to play in all of this. Because I was doing some research on his historical counterpart, and he, um, Saigo, Saigo played a very, very big role in the war and this revolution. So I wonder whether they are going to give him a bigger role, like like they are giving right now to Akatsura and Sakamoto, whereas their revolutionary activities were sort of in the undercurrents of the series for most of the time. 
now is coming more into play with the writer plot and whatnot. So I do wonder whether Psycho is going to be getting a similar treatment, obviously not as big because he's not as connected to the, um, to the Utsuro issue, but still. What else is there to think about? So, I think, at this point, we have gotten everybody back, except back in Edo, except for Shinsuke, except for the Shinsugumi, of course. And I'm not sure right now whether I want the Shinsugumi to come back, just like, I just like the climax of the uh, everybody's coming back chapters these past few, or whether I want them to come back in sweeping in at the just like at the point of like a critical battle and then they turn the tides in their favor. Sort of like the um Lord of the Rings, how the uh, all the army of the Rohirrim comes in at the uh, <laughs> at the um uh what's the battle uh, Battle of the Pelennor Fields to quote to give a Lord of the Rings reference because for whatever reason that's what exactly came to my mind right now. Because that would be absolutely glorious. It's it's the Shinsengumi, and it's also one of my favorite moments in all of film. To give us a similar thing with the Shinsengumi, that would make that would be something that would make me very very happy. But it's it's cool to see all of these little loose ends tied up instead of just the bigger ones. That 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 all of these smaller characters, all of these smaller details, they're not being forgotten in the midst of all of this craziness that we're that was introduced at the end of the last arc and that we're beginning to get now. And I'm just happy that Sirachi is... Really, he's remembering everything, because that's something that not every author thinks about, that little details like that, they're easy... They're easy to forget. It's easy to get, It's very easy to get carried away in the big picture, in the very epic one. And But Sirachi's not doing that. He's making sure that everybody is getting the acknowledgement that they need, that they deserve, and I am happy to see that. It's a, it's a mark of a good writer, you know? Of course, Nobunobu may be getting his big moment next week. I'll be quite intrigued to see what his exact, how, what he learned during the previous arc, how that will be affecting his behavior from this point forward. Because I'm guessing at this point that his character arc is that after this, after he after he aids us in dealing with this, that is going to end with um, a resignation on his part. Then of course they're actually I can't believe I forgot about this. Takasugi, what is Takasugi up to? Because I believe at the end of the uh, Rakyo arc. Everybody was just, like, looking dramatically into the distance, ready to do something. So now we know what the Gin, Kagura, and Shinpachi did. Obviously, we know what Katsura's done, we know what Sakamoto. But the ones we don't know exactly where they are right now are Takasugi and Kamui. So we do have to deal with both of those parties, the Kiketai and the Harusame, our former enemies, I guess you could say, our antagonists for a, a lot of the series, but now sort of allies, or at least the enemy of the enemy is my friend sort of thing. But yeah, that's, I think, that's everything. I think I've beaten everything that I can out of this chapter. And I am happy. I am happy to see Battle of Words that he's going to win. So obviously in the that means it in a diplomatic sense right now, through Katsura and Sakamoto. But I wonder whether that's going to have more wide-reaching implications toward the uh, conflict with the Tendoshu, with the uh, with our with my favorite, my dearest Sutsuro. But yeah, thank you very much for watching. Please leave some comments down below. I'd be happy to hear your thoughts on the chapter. Any any speculation or theories that you might have as to what's coming next? Please like or subscribe, and I will see you soon.